If you're looking for a small, compact, four-channel amplifier, I have a great option for you, the Pioneer GM DX874. We're all used to 50 to 75 watts from a typical Class AB amplifier in a medium-sized housing. The only equal option to adding a subwoofer is providing real power to your front and rear speakers. You cannot get beautiful and sublime bass without adequate mid-bass. Mid-bass requires three things, a dampened door, a properly installed mid-bass driver, and some power. A subwoofer won't provide that hard kick that you need from the front. That's where an ideal amplifier comes in. We need something with great bass notes, power, and will not distort on the high end. The Pioneer GMDX874 fits that bill. If you're looking for us to test this amp as a bridged sub amp, we didn't. You'll see why. Ideally, this amp is used for your front and rear speakers for solid mid bass, great mid range, and highs. This amplifier based on the spec sheet and our test, while it can, is not designed to drive a subwoofer. It looks ideally suited for two very nice sets of components, and the spec sheet seems to agree. Inside the box is a four channel amplifier, warranty card, user manual, hardware, Allen key, two two-channel RCA high-level RCA inputs, bass boost extension cable, and bass level control. Like all GMDX models, you'll get a brushed aluminum finish with the same cast housing as the regular GMD models. The GMDX models feature a gold-plated RCA input and upgraded internals. On the connection side, we have power and ground terminals that will accept up to four gauge direct wire inputs, remote turn on, and up to 10 gauge for speaker outputs on all four channels. We recommend four gauge power and ground leads, 12 to 14 gauge for speaker connections. On the input side, we have high and low pass filters with 12 decibel per octave slopes with adjustable frequencies between 40 and 500 Hertz. Pioneer does provide a variable bass boost control for channels one and two if you plan on using this as a three channel amplifier. Let's test this amplifier out. Pioneer only rates this amplifier 100 watts with four channels driven at four ohms, full range. Every other output rating is at one kilohertz. The first test we ran was two channels driven, four ohms, 40 hertz, 14.4 volts. Our audio precision will generate our signal and measure distortion. Our HP 8903B audio analyzer picked up 73 watts RMS, 0.3% distortion, and 17 volts of output. Our AMM1 read 99 watts and we drew 14.2 amps of current. We didn't take these tests to 1% due to the waveform as shown on the oscilloscope. Whether this is audible is up to you. Next test was two channels driven, four ohms, one kilohertz, 14.3 volts. Our HP 8903B audio analyzer picked up 87 watts RMS, 0.3% distortion, and 19 volts of output. Our AMM1 read 106 watts and we drew 15.3 amps of current. Next, we went down to two channels driven, two ohms, 40 hertz, 14.2 volts. Our HP picked up 119 watts RMS, 0.3% distortion, and 15.5 volts of output. The AMM1 read 166 watts and we drew 23 amps of current. Next, we went to two channels driven, two ohms, one kilohertz, 14.1 volts. Our HP picked up 199 watts RMS, 0.94% distortion, and 19 volts of output. The AMM1 read 182 watts and we do 34 amps of current. 
why didn't we test this as a bridge subwoofer amplifier? Because as you can see, the ratings on this amplifier really designate this as a four channel full range amp. And based on our findings, we would have to agree. Will it power a subwoofer? Sure, but we do recommend one of Pioneer's true subwoofer amplifiers. Be sure to go to qualitymobilevideo.com to get all of your car audio and video gear with us today. Links in the bio. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button. If you hated it, click the dislike button. Join the conversation below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks for watching.